Hello there everyone, Chris here, and welcome to something new for the channel. We are looking at the opening menu, I guess, of Suzerain, a choose-your-own-adventure, ex choose political simulator type game. Um, I've had it for a little while, actually, and I've always, I've kind of wanted to do a little bit of a, of a playthrough of it. The weird thing with this channel is that if it isn't workers and resources, it doesn't tend to get a massive, massive following. Um, but I don't know, I kind of really just want to have a playthrough of this and put it out there on YouTube and see if people like it. And if not, hey, at least at least I'm having fun, hey. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an interesting, interesting game. We play uh, the newly elected president of a nation called Swordland. Uh, which rhymes with Fjordland, so in many ways it's related to Works and Resources. It's, it's, it's an interesting game, a really, really interesting game. Uh, I've not played too much of it. I don't know any spoilers. I don't know how the story progresses. We're going to make the choices. Like, we're, we're going to play this totally in character and just go with what we think would be the best choice politically. We're not trying to meta game this or anything, so I'm not going to look for any guides, that type of thing. We're just gonna we're gonna play it. We're gonna play it and see what happens, okay? It's gonna be interesting. I guess all there is to do is to click new game then. Are you sure you wanna start? The one thing with this game is there is no loading up from a previous point. We can't Once once we're in it, we can't go back and change our choices, so we will live or die by our decisions, you know? But let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. Really, really interesting little game. Um, I will read things. You are my enslavement, my freedom. You are my flesh burning like a raw summer night. You are my country. Um, it's all text-based, so I will try and make that as interesting as possible and that type of thing. We'll we'll read things. Okay. The prologue, then. The, pre the, the prologue to our adventure begins in 1909, the kingdom of Swordland. <coughs> we, we, us... Open our eyes to the world. You came from... So where are we going to come from? Are we going to come from a wealthy family in the city of La Chavon? La Chavon? I don't know. A middle-income family in the city of Hall... Hallsword? Or an impoverished family in the city of Deir? Um... Ah... Uh, I don't... Do you know what? Let's let's go for it. We're going to come from an impoverished family. I like the idea of being from the, the poor class. I think... The way we're going to play this game is I'm probably going to play it along the lines of being some, I don't know, a more populist, more more left-leaning, I guess, person. If I, if that is possible, um, I know you can't exactly, <laughs> it's, it's not like deciding between ideologies, I don't think, in this game. But I think we would, we would be a, we want to be seen as a, as a, person for the working classes so i'm gonna go with an impoverished person uh your parents named your aunt named you anton as the only child of a farmer you spent your childhood among the wheat fields running through them like theresa may <laughs> life was not easy you were too poor to afford a good education the rain family okay so that's my name anton rain uh the rain family was caring regardless of their economical di economically dire situation your parents always did their best to support you and the years passed. Moving on to 1923, then during a history class at school, the bell started to ring unexpectedly. You heard a loud commotion outside. As everyone tried to figure out what was going on, the principal announced the historic revolution. The kingdom was no more. The Republic of Swordland was born. If you did not fully understand, <laughs> you were happy that you had a day off. You were somewhat worried. 23, I was born in 1908, so that puts me at 15, yeah? 15. Was I? <laughs> As a 15 year old, I probably would have been happy for the day off. <laughs> okay, a few years later, after graduating, you passed the university exam with high marks. Good for. Anton Rain. Even though your family was poor, the public education system made it possible 
to go to a university. You had the opportunity to choose between several studies. You chose law at Holstord University, economics at the Lackhaven Business School, or history at the University of Culture. Oh, man. Okay, okay, okay. I think... I mean, me personally, I, for, for there I would have probably done history. I did terribly in economics at A-level. Um, absolutely. I say... No, right, right. They made us do an A-level of economics at GCSE, which I don't know what they were thinking. Uh, and I hated it. I absolutely hated it. I thought that it was just... Rub it. Funnily enough, now I actually find economics quite interesting, but no, no. Uh, so, for me personally, it's going to be history. During the first year, you attended a lecture with David Vichy. He was a well-known diplomat from the Foreign Ministry and the son of the President. After observing the hall in silence, he explained why real politic uh, is important for a successful foreign policy. He argued that a strategy based on practical and material factors would be much more successful in reaching Swordland's ambitions. You agreed in principle, you questioned what you were being taught, your only c concern was passing <laughs> the exam. I'm going to question what we were being taught, real politic. Nah. Soldiers entered the campus in the evening ahead of the first election. Many were in shock as the uniformed men created a security cordon and started arresting teachers. Oh no. A group of students started gathering in protest, along with your best friend, Peter Vecton. You decided to... Oh, man. Would I have been a protester or avoid confrontation? Uh, well, let's protest. We'll protest with the students. Come on. We're here. We're here. Oh, that's loud. I maybe need to turn the volumes down a little bit. If this, if this audio is all wrong, I'm so sorry. One of the officers made a loud announcement that echoed through the campus. General Luderin declares martial law in order to restore the administration. Please stand back and disperse to your rooms. You join the soldiers that slowly march towards the large group of soldiers. Suddenly, the soldiers charged. Oh, sugar. Oh, no. A student fell and was trampled as everyone started running away. <sighs> Jeez. Did I run? Was, was that me running away or would I have hold my ground? Uh, I mean, I, I, I want to be the brave guy who holds my ground. That the soldiers beat you relentlessly. It was a gloomy year. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, God. it was a gloomy year. You're right. The coup split the students into two groups and caused frequent fights. Torture and imprisonment of any opposing voice became a daily routine in Dea. You didn't want to stay idle and decided to join a human rights group, the student council, or a political debate group. Um, I really have no preference here, so I'm going to go with a political debate group. Dozens of debates helped you hone your oratory skills, whilst also helping you grow your network. Even though the debates were pretty heated between the different groups, you all grew from sharing ideas. In one meeting, Peter, my best friend, introduced you to one of his friends, Monica, who was a volunteer for the Swordish League of Women. You were immediately attracted to her... Oh, this is my wife, isn't it? So... Her intelligence, her beauty, her diligence. I mean... Oh, well, let's, should we be... Let's be proper. Let's go intelligence, you know? The politically charged... Sorry, the politically charged environment led to you joining the Red Youth, the Socialists, joining the Young Swords, Nationalists, staying away from any... Well, I said I was going to go left, didn't I? So let's go Red Youth. Oh. The radio relayed that the communist general Ricard surrounded Luderin and his troops and demanded their surrender. They refused and heavy fighting broke out across the country. You couldn't believe it. The army was fighting amongst itself. Swordland plunged into chaos. Ricard's sudden attack caused more instability in the country. But compared to fascist Luderin, he was a real socialist. This convinced you to participate in a support march. You were chanting, Freedom, and equality, freedom equality, solidarity, workers of the world unite, 
bring down the fascists. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, Workers of the World Unite, obviously, is a very Marxist... I mean, they're all pretty decent, aren't they? What did we say in this? What would we have said? Workers of the World Unite. I... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I feel like... <coughs> would we re would we be chanting Worker? Oh, well, let's go with it. Let's go with it. What does it matter? You are marching under the protection of Rickard's soldiers. The students opposing the coup gathered a few hundred metres in front of you. The many nationalists were among them. We knew something was about to go down. Something was about to happen. I stayed. There was a massive clash between the two sides. Soldiers began to beat the students. Tanks started rolling forward. In this chaotic moment, you saw a young girl about to get run over by the tank. I'm a hit. I'm. <sighs> We're going with a hero. I ran to save her. Oh God! I couldn't reach her in time. Oh, I will never forget her face. Holy cow. The clashes escalated into a full-blown civil war. The horrors made you isolate yourself for a while. Monica helped you cope and love grew between the two of you. However, it was a very... It was a difficult time for love. This chaos must end. I know I'm not reading everything 100% accurate. We move on a few years. One year to be precise. The charismatic colonel Tarquin Sol orchestrated a sudden coup and brought an end to this chaos. He wrote a new constitution and restored stability. The people saw him as a saviour. He formed the United Swordland Party and ran as a presidential candidate in the first ever elections. Did I vote for a United Swordland Party or did I not vote? United Swordland Party is the party that we are a part of, I think, in this game. But I kind of feel like I was in support of the 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 communists there, so I, we didn't vote in that first one. Yeah, the USP won the election by a large majority, and after graduation, you kept seeing Monica and noticed her in, and noticed her interest to marry. However, a letter arrived from the military calling you to do your compulsory service. It was time to serve your national duty. A devastating civil war broke out in a neighbouring country, Wayland. The distinguished major, Yosef Lancia, I assume, ordered your, you to lead your squad on a border patrol mission. It was a very cold winter night when you began marching out of Gunroom Outpost. I could see my breath. Oh, that's loud again. After several hours of marching through snowy hills, distant noises were heard. Visibly, visibly, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Visibility was too low to confirm the source. The squad crawled forward in formation and found a spot to observe. A group of refugees had made it beyond the border fall fence. You. I mean, I want to be a compassionate man here, so I'm going to let them slip through. After the patrol, Major Lancia arrived with anger, oh no, and immediately relieved you of your command, calling you a disappointment. One of your squad members had reported your actions. After several months of scrubbing the floors as punishment, your duties ended and you went back to civilian life. You and Monica decide to share the rest of your life together. Oh, Monica. After receiving your blessings of her parents, a ceremony was held in Holsword. During the same year, you worked hard to secure a high-paying job at the governing United Swordland Party. I mean, interesting how things change in a year or two. It was much more difficult to start your career on good foot because of the refugee incident, but you still managed it. Working for the ruling party was the easiest path to power. The financial compensation was too good to pass up. It was the best opportunity to change the country for the better. We'll go with that. You became the foreign pol policy assistant to one of the more experienced members of the assembly. You worked long and hard, staying late at work, receiving dozens of foreign policy plans. I was climbing a ladder, guys. I was climbing a ladder. Sol strengthened the Republic by removing the institutions and symbols of the former royal... The former kingdom from society. Things were looking up for the country as a massive economic boom continued and people were the happiest they had been in a decade. Election time came and it was decided. President Tarquin Sol was elected again. Great. The preparation of the most comprehensive trade agreement with Agnolia was occupying most of your personal time. 
But your significant contribution to the trade talks triggered an invitation to meet President Tarquin Sol himself, who offered you a key position. You were to become the youngest member of the Assembly. I accept right away or accept with doubts. I'll accept it right away, mate. As the youngest MP, it was difficult to connect with your influential inner circle. You needed allies. So, good old Peter, you brought Peter as your right-hand man. And the birth of your son, Frank, provided a brief moment of joy and relief. You, sacrifice work to spend time with your family, sacrifice family to improve your party position. Oh, I want to be a family man, you know. During your absence, Peter found trustworthy contracts tax and strengthen your position in the pie. At the same time, President Sol increased his authority over the years. His growing ego started to cause strife within the party. The cracks began to show. Holy cow, the, 1945. President Sol barely secured a majority in the election against the opposition leader. Over the past years, people were growing discontent with corruption and the worsening quality of life. Meanwhile, calls for a united Swordland Party Congress became louder as leadership struggles started to brew. You. Do I watch from the sidelines, keep supporting the president, or join the internal opposition? Oh, man. I kind of want to join the internal opposition. I mean, I'm not for the... I'm not for corruption. We're joining... Yeah, we'll, we'll be the opposition. You gave your support to Ewald... Ewald? Ewald? Alfonso, a reformist and talented business magnate. Why would I give a support to a business magnate? Shut up. Who was the main contender for party leadership? Meanwhile, in a desperate effort to secure votes before the Congress, President Sol was meeting party members one by one. But he didn't approach you. Oh no, I've made... The party congress was nothing short of impressive. The banners of the United Swordland were decorating every possible spot. Thousands of influential political figures, lobbyists and benefactors gathered for this turning point. The vote for the party leadership began. Well, I mean, he didn't... Sol didn't invite me, so we're, 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 we're voting for Alfonso, the business magnate. The effort bore fruit as the contentious leadership vote was won by Ewald Alfonso. During the Congress, Sol announced his retirement from politics. You knew the structure he had established was to stay. The country had become increasingly authoritarian. You were happy that Sol was finally leaving, were troubled by the departure of Sol, didn't care about who was in charge. I think I would be troubled because... I'll be troubled, let's be troubled. I think, uh, yeah, it would still be a worrying time. A, bit ch a month later, your daughter was born. Monica named her Dina. She motivated you during a tumultuous period in the party. General elections were approaching. The United Southern Party was under new leadership and Alf Ewald Alfonso Oh god, under the new leadership of Ewald Yeah, you joined the party's effort and campaigned for him. Did your best not to help him. I'm going to campaign for him. I supported him all the way through. Oh, flipping heck. During the general election, the main opposition leader was embroiled in a sex scandal with his secretary. He was replaced by a strong opposition figure, Friends Richter, but the damage had already been done. The extensive privatisation programme prop oh, proposed by Ewald Alfonso secured an election for United Swordland Party. I've picked the wrong guy to back here. I don't want to privatise things. Over the next years, you did your best, to make best in order to make Swordland a better place. Tried all that was necessary to climb the ladder. Dedicated yourself to the party and its success. We did our best to make Swordland a better place. The presidency of Alfonso saw many bold reforms, but followed by a very, oh god, a serious economic recession. The other parties announced their bid for the 1953 election, but the unfair system hampered all opposition efforts to win. You thought the party could not survive another crisis. Were worried about economic recession. Worried that the rep your... Oh, worried that my reputation will be tarnished along with Alfonso. I'm worried about economic recession. Together with Peter, you pr your presence in the USP grew, and you became the new face of the face of a new wing in the party. You effectively took over the leadership of President Alfonso. Oh my god, I can't read. You, Chris, effectively took over the leadership as President Alfonso lost control of the country. The moment to make a move had come. You. Do I blame Alfonso for a crisis on television? Bribe and extort his inner circle. Advise Alfonso to step down. 
I'm going to advise him to step down. He didn't take your advice seriously and started to reshuffle his cabinet, but most of his inner camp circle abandoned him. Your diplomatic attitude made the party vote for you as leader. Come on, guys. Following this, you announced that you will be running for president in the general election with Peter as our running mate. It's my turn. It's our turn to roll. Okay. After visiting every city and town during the campaign, you made a speech on state television. You promised to enact democratic reforms or preserve the national values. We're going to bring in reforms, guys. We're going to be... The people... <laughs> let me say. The people are tired of empty promises. We need fundamental change in our institutions and government. A solid and transparent democracy awaits us. Brothers and sisters, a new constitution and a new age is upon us. And the broadcast ended. On election day, millions of these people... Can I, like... Right. I'm turning this effects volume down right now. I'm going to turn... The... Te... In fact, I probably should just turn the master volume down. I hope you can still hear the music. Because the music is absolutely... Flipping awesome. On election day, millions went out to cast their vote. And it was time to face the truth. I hope we've been elected. <laughs> Chapter 1. President Reign. I think that that's the way of doing this. Let's get a lay of the land. And then maybe end this first... First battle. This first chapter. Look at this guy! We can... Oh my god. What does he look like? Movie star. Rebellious. Stylish. Twenties. Gentleman. Oh my god. This is all. This is awesome! I kind of... Right. Let's go. Twenties. Twenties hat. He can have... An idealist beard. Clean shaven intellectual. Swordland gentleman. Oh, I love this. This is awesome. Like, little moustache. Oh, wow. Right, so a, a Malayan... Oh, God. Malayan... Malenyevist. I think that Malen... Malenyev is like the communists, right? I think. And so, I mean, he looks awesome there. Maroon suit. Swordland first. Ooh. Bit nationalist, isn't it? Tuxedo. Grand white suit. Can I not just have like a a, a, a little rough suit? Like why can I not just have like a cheap suit? Well I will go for this. What about accessories? Oh my god. Oh my god we can give him some <laughs> Okay, okay, right, I think well, let's change this round. I don't think he should I, I like the hat. The hat is great, but I think we should like for his profile picture, you know? What about facial hair? Oh, man, he looks good there as a theorist. He looks a little bit like Trotsky. Um, oh, my God. Markian. Holy cow, there's so much. Oh, that is very... <laughs> that is very Stalin. Reno. Oh, gosh. And the default is that. What should we go with? I, kind, I still kind of like the Swordland Gentleman one, but also Revolutionary is kind of fun. What about my glasses then? He, he should wear glasses. This is that, that's Those are my glasses in real life, those black ones. He could have no glasses and a pipe. He's going to have these round glasses and then background. Okay, 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 we can... Have an office background. Like we, we have. Or we have a rare. <laughs> I mean, that is just... That is just a... It's 1953. Stalin's died. We've made him again by the looks of it. Right? Oh, yeah. Let's go for it. We go for it. He looks great. You won't be able to change your look. Oh, I'm fine with it, mate. I'm fine. Okay. Election promises. Let's do this. And then we'll maybe call it quits. As Anton Rain, you made many promises to the people of Swordland in order to gain their votes. They must be considered very carefully. So what did we campaign on? Swordland's economy uh, has been based on a planned doctrine since its formation until the former president, Alfonso, enacted free market reforms. Now the country finds itself 
between two different economic systems promote the free market or a planned economy uh, planned economy we we've made ourselves look like blinking stalin in the portrait picture diplomacy the intensity uh, sorry the intensifying global ri- rivalry between the capitalist arcasia in the west and the communist united cortana in the east is opening new diplomatic policies swordland could take steps to align itself closer to one I mean, the obvious answer here is to align ourselves with the East, because that's kind of the playthrough we're going here, but would we do that? Would Or would we be like, neither, we are our own people? We're gonna. I'm going to say neither. I'm going to say neither. I could go to, I, I mean, we, we could go down the aligning with the communists, but I kind of want to see where we can go like, as much as we've laughed just then about creating Joseph Stalin and going down the left front and stuff, I kind of don't want this guy to be, like, a, 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 so, a, not a Soviet stooge, but I don't want him to be, like, a, like, a, he's not a puppet, but you know what I mean? I kind of I kind of want, I feel like this guy has been elected because he is the bright future of Swordland, and that's because he's promoted Swordland's, like, strength on its own merit. So immigration. In recent years, bloodish uh, Wiesek and Agnolian immigrants have flocked to Swordland due to the relaxed immigration laws enacted by Alfonso. As a result, tensions between Swordlands and the immigrants have increased. Uh, I mean, for me, I would keep immigration. Okay, next. Term of focus. We have also promised to focus on a certain extensive subject within our first term. The people expect us to resolve the negative situation within one of these topics. Okay, what is it? Health. Since the four is the difference of service quality of service quality between urban and rural hospitals has been getting increasingly worse. Average life expectancy has dropped. Education. The lack of schools, teachers, and even classroom equipment in certain areas has caused a massive gaps in the previous robust education system law and order do we increase crime increased uh, crime is pushing law enforcement to its limits while judges at the court deal with huge and expanding backlogs of legal cases or the military uh flipping heck i mean health it's between for me it's between health and education i don't know Theoretically, if we solve education, would health work? But then what's the... Oh. Let's go with education. We, we, we got elected on a path of education. Your promises will have consequences. Yes. Okay. Before we go on to the next one, then. Before we begin this effectively, I think we will end this episode here. If you've liked this, um, this, this little prologue before we start to actually run a country uh let me know let me know in the comments below i hope you have i'm really intrigued by this uh let's see where it goes yeah i'm yeah why not it's exciting exciting um as always thank you then so much for spending the time with me uh i look forward to seeing you in the next one let's see how we can make swordland better okay yeah see you soon